How many of you played that game as a kid where you put your head down in a bat, you go in circles as fast as you can, and then you get up and you try to run in a straight line? And what happens? Woo, you fall off to one side and everybody has a good laugh. So what are you inducing there? Vertigo. So what I'm going to talk about today is vertigo and a couple of quick pointers of what you ought to do if you develop vertigo. All right, the first thing I'm going to say is that vertigo is the sensation of movement when you're not moving. And it's particularly a rotational movement. Folks will describe that uh, the room is spinning even though they're sitting still. So that's the symptom of vertigo. Now, I have to say, vertigo is a symptom not a diagnosis. <clears throat> I've had folks that will come in and say, you know, I went to the doctor and they diagnosed me with vertigo. Well, that's not actually a diagnosis. It's kind of like the way a headache is a symptom, but it's not a diagnosis. The question if somebody has a headache is, why? Do I have migraines? Do I have a tension headache? Do I have a caffeine withdrawal headache? What's this from? Uh, same thing with vertigo. So the symptom of vertigo has a why behind it. Why do I have vertigo? Now, vertigo is a humongous topic. I mean, I, I spent lots of time in medical school and residency hearing talks on different components of vertigo and spent hours studying and trying to make sense out of it. So it's not like I'm going to give you any exhaustive topic on it. But I do want to say, uh, if you develop it, what are some practical pointers in terms of what to do? So the first thing here to say is my opinion is that all new vertigo needs evaluation. <clears throat> say that again. All new vertigo needs evaluation. So, you know, if somebody has, say, vertigo associated with a migraine and this is, you know, the 38th time that they've had the migraine associated vertigo, like, yeah, that probably doesn't need to be evaluated. But if somebody wakes up and has vertigo and they're like, oh gosh, I've never had this before, that needs evaluation. Okay. Now, with that in mind, the question is how to approach evaluation and where to seek care. So here, this is, I'm not going to be able to cover all the different ways that vertigo can show itself, but I want to hit a few common categories. And if you experience vertigo and it's not one of these categories, call your doctor and get some advice. Um, but so the first that I'll say is, <clears throat> if vertigo is very severe, and in that case, it's probably going to be associated with vomiting and, and uh, inability to keep things down, you get dehydrated, it's, it's miserable. You're probably going to figure this out, but you should go to the emergency room for that. So really severe vertigo ought to go to the emergency room. Same thing if you have vertigo with neurologic symptoms. Um, in particular, if you have double vision or a clumsy tongue and difficulty speaking or difficulty swallowing or facial weakness, these are worrisome additional symptoms, and I would say in that case, get to the emergency room ASAP. Same thing as well, if somebody has new vertigo and new neck pain, that's potentially concerning. Um, so that one may also need emergency room evaluation, but it needs to be evaluated really fast. Okay, so that's the emergency category. Now a second category would be someone who has vertigo that's kind of been, it's not so intense, and maybe it's been building over a few days or even a few weeks, um, needs evaluation, but that one doesn't kind of grab you and shake you and say, you need to go to the ER. So that's one where, you know, you call the, call the office and get an appointment and get this checked out. Um, a third category, very common one, <clears throat> probably the most common one that I see in the office, uh, is one where a person describes that all of a sudden, every time they move their head in a certain way, they get 10 seconds of intense vertigo, especially laying down in bed or rolling over in bed and produces 10 seconds of very intense vertigo. Um, so that's a, that's a relatively common phenomenon worth evaluation. That's a great one to come in and see me, partly so we can do an evaluation to identify the underlying cause. Uh, and then if it's what it usually is, this condition called benign positional paroxysmal vertigo, there's a maneuver I can teach you to put a stop to it. So, I hope this has been helpful and reasonably pragmatic. Uh, I hope you never get vertigo, but if you do, get it checked out.